previously on the Omen podcast. The judge will be coming to the town in two days' time, so Smedley will be going on trial in two days. Should we find a lawyer? Seems <laughs> I'm a natural 20 lawyer. Okay. My name is Mr. Ritz. You did say there was a uh, force field over in the uh, theme park, was that right? Uh, ghost-based forest feed. Yeah. I can get rid of that, too, if you want. I like that. Favor for a favor, right? Favor for a favor. They were using Gumbaland as a way to pull in people and have them ride the roller coaster into the mines to become vampire juice. You see the vampire queen. Oh, shit. There are intruders in the hive. Devour the children. Bring me their corpses so I may feast on their flesh. So the roller coaster is moving backwards. Yes. And you are at the back. So we can't see anything in the direction that we're moving, but we can see everything chasing us. Yes, exactly. What will happen next? Let's find out in this episode of Oben. What I want to do, I want to do, uh, so I'm probably like strapped in with like the, the safety bar, I imagine, but I'm going to hulk out a little bit and rip it off so I can get out Okay. and use keeping the strength on so that I can keep my grip on the, on the thing as we're going up. I'm going to climb over to the end where Annabelle is and... And go like, hey, Annabelle, uh, move up one cart, will you? <laughs> what is that voice? I'm already in the front. I can't move up. Let's move back one. God, oh, just uh, move back one cart. But I'm gonna lose my line of sight to take a shot. I uh, rip uh, open the um, the safety bars on Annabelle's cart. Come on, just take the next one. Damn it! All right, I move back. And now I'm going to disconnect the last or the first yes the first card <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. so i can drop it down on the on the vampires coming after us <gasps> oh that's genius that's great oh i like that okay um roll for strength yes critical hit 18 okay can, do you want to describe what happens here or shall i do it uh please please all right so you disconnect the front cart and the cart goes barreling down the tracks towards the vampire drones and the vampire soldiers that are clawing up the track towards you and just as they realize what's happening it smacks them and there are these ranch dressing pieces of blood flying everywhere and they land all over the inside of the tunnel coating it in a horrible sort of white drippy substance <laughs> and it takes quite a long time before more vampires start tunneling up through the rock and through the cave after you guys and they're all covered in this ranch dressing now like coming towards you guys i have so many regrets side sidebar yep uh is it canon now that ranch dressing is secretly vampire blood and there's like factory farming of vampire blood well do as to them as they do as unto us i suppose <laughs> you know what i regret asking that can uh, we go on <laughs> so the roller coaster like twists back and forth and you feel yourself going up and annabelle you turn around and you sense something. You realize that you guys are traveling towards Gumboland at breakneck speed, and there is a great big magical barrier in the way. Uh, so, we don't, and we don't have... Did, Death did, God. Oh, yeah, we can get his help. Yeah, because this is quite dangerous. Uh, how close are we to this barrier that would murder us? I'd say it's about a minute till it hits. We got time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming Annabelle warns us of this, yes? Yes, absolutely. I don't remember anything about the Death God. Do you remember his name? No. His name was Mr. Ribs. Oh god, I hate him. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any way I can see the character sheets of my pals here? Friends? No. Okay. Do any of you have- does anyone have something flammable? I want to do something cool. You are our dedicated fire starter. You should really have some. I'm not giving you my Helsing Compendium. Oh no. So we know that they're going to come up the shaft after us, right? Still yep. covered in ranch dressing. And ranch dressing is slightly flammable, right? Is it? <laughs> it is. Is it? Have you ever tried to light 
like ranch dressing? You haven't seen a YouTube video of that? No. I'm googling this. This can't be true. <laughs> I am also googling I this. I have ranch dressing and a lighter, and I really want to try. I do not see anything here about it being flammable. Well, <laughs> it depends on like the vinaigrette content of the ranch dressing. And how much gasoline you put it out. <laughs> that ranch dressing is kind of flammable. So what I've got in my inventory is this giant picture. Which, I don't know who's on it still. <laughs> I can set that on fire and drop it down, and it will burn everyone in our path. Could we turn one of the carts into a car and block the tunnel behind us? Oh. I mean, wait, that's genius. We could turn a cart into a car, and then... And then light it on fire. Because <laughs> the car will have petrol in it. That's true. Uh, okay, are we gonna... Are we gonna set the car on fire, or are we gonna try to drive the car up the tracks and not go into- That's what I was gonna say, because also, like, it's probably been more than a minute and a half now, so we're probably dead. By the time, if we get up to the projection, right, if we go into gumbo lane, we'll be on the surface. And I, as a lawyer, have this sense. I have a sense in the back of my mind! That I need to get there by the time of my client's trial. And there might be a trial by combat. I'm not sure what's happening. Just call Mr. Ribs. Son. Fine, I will call Mr. Ribs. I don't like anything that involves him at all. But I will call him to make God happy and to make <laughs> the other two happy. Do you want to call him then? I guess. I guess. I don't want to. But what would you him. say? Hello, Mr. Ribs. Fuck's <laughs> you finally get to, you finally get to say hello to someone, and you don't take the advantage. All right, um, you say hello, Mr. Ribs, and immediately right next to you in the car materializes Mr. Ribs, and he's sort of like leaning over next to you, and he's like, "Why, hello there, Annabelle. I I I, I didn't think I'd see you for a while. What, what what's happening? And um, why the hell are we on a roller coaster? Well, why weren't you more?" Opaque about the clues about Annabelle's past. Stop interrupting. Sorry, transparent. Sorry, yeah, my bad. Where? If you, Mr. Ribs, if you look down, we got a bunch of vampires. And then on the other side, we got a forest field. And we are stuck between a hard place and a ranch dress in the unhappy place. So we <laughs> need some help right now. Well, um, I, I did say that I would uh, open up the uh, thing for you. So uh, I, I better do that then. He turns around and then dematerializes, and you see him shoot up the tracks towards the shield. Then he stands on the tracks and he pulls both arms apart, and the bubble opens for a short period of time. And your roller coaster travels straight through the hole in the barrier, and then the barrier closes back up. Yes! And you guys watch as the vampires like start to plow directly into the barrier, and they're all exploding into ranch dressing as they hit it until there's just like an entire Entire, like all of it where there were originally loads of vampires and the roller coaster twists and turns for a short while and you end up coming out of what appears to be a hole in the ground you see another track right next to this track and the roller coaster stops and then goes on to the other track and then you are taken on the ride around the gator like the normal standard operating ride of the gator so you um then end up back at the station and you are now at the gator well now we're stuck inside the forest field right i throw up i would also like to throw up i don't actually i wouldn't like to throw up but i am throwing up because a giant hulk man is throwing up right now <laughs> oh no i definitely de-hulked like as i threw up so maybe it looked like I threw up my hulkness. That's a good, good image. Oh, okay, that's disgusting. I'm throwing up as well. <laughs> Can I roll for projectile throw up? All right, what you roll for strength, I guess. Got strength of nine. Okay, so I'm gonna say it doesn't go very far, so it ends up mostly on you. Oh no! This is what happened last time I was a lawyer. <laughs> The three of you get off the ride, and you are now encased within this sort of happy bubble, and you see. A clown. Of course. Mr. Gumbo, I presume? Well, hey there! Uh-huh. How are you doing? Okay, wait. I say, well, hey there! Back in his voice. Heidi ho, Heidi! I thought, thought, thought you were, were one of them! Well, no, I'm, I'm one you. of you! <laughs> Roll for persuasion. <laughs> okay. Oh. Four and three. Annabelle, Annabelle, please! Come on, save us. No. 
No, y'all, y'all gotta figure out what the hell y'all done. Look, at least I can actually mimic his voice. <laughs> I can tell that none of you are from the Clown Association of America. <laughs> we're <the> scabs. <laughs> I thought that you were one of the vampire things. Nope, just anti-human scabs. I'm sorry for attacking you. The robot walks up to you, um, and it says. How did you get in here? Well, we just, uh, we just hopped right on over using our clown shoes. <laughs> you, I think we can drop the act now, Koala. I, I, I think he's seen through it. I think, I think I'm on to something here. Okay, don't let me stop you. The clown looks at you and it rolls its eyes. Well, only one of the eyes rolls. The other eye is just sort of there. The servos in it aren't working properly. It then looks at all of you and goes, I've been here for several years now. I tried to create a barrier to stop them from bringing more people down there. I died down there. It was horrible. Well, you really done messed up because anyone can get down there, but no one can get in here, so you're alone. Don't you feel so alone all the time? And I flip open the passive-aggressive parasol. <laughs> really? Yeah. But he's nice. Ne for now. <laughs> I mean, he's pretty creepy. And if he's depressed, he'll also be susceptible. Okay, roll for focus. We got a focus of two! <laughs> My digital dice are garbage today! They are! The clown looks at the umbrella and goes, I'm sorry, that won't work anymore on me. And then it looks down and points at the roller coaster and says, The vampires were using the roller coaster! To bring people down into the depths. What did I say? What did I say? Well done. Well done. You figured it out. You figured out my puzzle. It then looks kind of sad and it goes, When we were down there, they herded us all into a room. And then they put us on a machine. And the machine drained our life essence into these big red vials. I've been here ever since as a ghost. You know... A ghost is kind of like a soul, right? Quite, sort of, kind of. Uh, I know a different place you could go if you wanted. Such as? Well, it wouldn't be here. I'm afraid I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be here until the vampires are gone. Uh, okay, but do you want to come with me after? Can I have your soul, basically? No, you can't have my soul, I'm afraid. In exchange for clearing up the vampires? No. Think about it this way. If you give him your soul, then he will become, he'll assume your responsibility as the guardian of this place. And you won't be alone no more. Roll for persuasion. 20. Natural 20. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. And I'm doing this laugh as he gives his soul to Martin. <laughs> The ghost. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The ghost clown looks at you, Martin. Yeah. Uh, and he says, If you rid the town of vampires, then I will give you my soul. Okay, let me just uh, make a contract here. So, this isn't something we talked about, but being that one of my uh, demon powers is being able to deal with paperwork very efficiently, Yes. can we just say that the other one, or part of that is being able to click out contracts? You want papermancy like, yes. to be able to like, spawn paper. Yes. Uh, I will allow it. I will say that you hear in your ear the voice of Isha. Hmm, that, that, that seemed really easy. I, I, I'm sure this won't come to backfire on you in the future. No, agreed. Sounds great. Good. Well, okay, then. Uh, I would suggest that you uh, go with the standard regular contract. Uh-huh. Um... So move your hands like this. And then they show you to, like, lift your hands in a certain direction. And then, poof, a contract appears in front of you. Aha! Okay. Uh, I don't think I have pen summoning power, so does anyone have a pen? I have got... Well, a lighter finger would not work with that. Um, I've got a machete with blood on it. I've got a pen in the prison purse. Oh, okay. Okay. Plowed a clicky pen that I definitely haven't stolen from a hotel or nothing. <laughs> the robot grabs the Hilton pen and he signs on the dotted line at the bottom. And then the contract poofs into demon fire and then disappears. Nice. The ghost robot then talks to you all and says, 
I can let the shield down if, if, if you guys need to get out of here. But I will not be bringing it back down after we leave. Uh, maybe, well, maybe we should check out the area then. Yeah. yeah. So the last time you guys saw this place, you were on the other side of the barrier. Across through the barrier, you can see the ruins of the hospital that you summoned. The cure of the dark bayou. And on this side there is the roller coaster and also one of those sort of spinny rides. Is the grass greener on this other side? Uh, I would say that the grass is in fact greener on this side. Uh, it looks like that the slight shimmery reflection and refraction of the big like ghost bubble um, has actually focused the sun, allowing the grass to be slightly greener over here. Knew it. You know, subjectively though, I, I still think it looks greener on the other side. But it would to you because the refraction from this side through the bubble looks greener. But in fact, scientifically, it's less green. Can we use observation to pierce that the veil of science? Why would you want to pierce the veil of science? Well, I can't do it either way because I rolled a four, so... All right, then. Okay. Do you guys want to roll for observation just to sort of um, get an idea of what there is over here? See if you can find anything. Yeah, to scope it out. Got an 11. 8. 14. I will say that you find yourselves a med kit, and the med kit it will be used to heal someone. This feels very video gamey. <laughs> yes, it's, so you, you find it on uh, one of the sort of, So there's like a sort of staff room thing, uh, if you can see on the map. It's just across from the gator. It's slightly in the water a little bit. Uh, and inside there, there's a bunch of like staff equipment and you find yourselves a med kit in that. Okay. And you can use that to heal one of you. Better than using the haunted morphine. Well, one of you's already used the haunted morphine. Well, use one of the haunted morphine. Yes. We had two. You do have two. Who? <laughs> the most hurt right now well i'm uh i'm 12 hurt <laughs> on the scale of 1 to 28 how are you doing annabelle 21 heart or 21 okay wait <laughs> i don't know how we're doing this <laughs> is it 12 hurt where you're missing 12 or i'm i'm feeling i'm feeling about halfway okay oh okay you're probably the most hurt she'll might and use the health pack i guess yeah put put some bandages on me Okay, could you roll 2 plus 1d5, please? Slash r, 2 plus 1d, nope, that's an s, d5, 3, that's not a lot. You get 3 health that's back. the minimum possible that I could have possibly gotten. Genuinely impressed how much you flubbed that. Uh, you, like, put some bandages in just places on your body, and they kind of work <laughs> a little bit, but... It, it's not amazing. It's more of a mummy cosplay than anything else. Do you guys want to grab anything else whilst you're here? It's just like a sort of staff room. It's got like um, some rakes and things in it. It's got, snacks? It's got some snacks. Oh, they're probably way expired. By they're now. massively expired, yeah. They've gone like hard as rock. Just across from here is like the food like selling stall, and it's got some food in it that's gone off. Uh, and there's like those rows of little uh, sweet things you can put your money into. Uh, and they've got like little sort of gummy rings and stuff you can get from them. Is there money around here? Yeah, I'd say you've got a couple of, bit of change in your pocket. Okay. Potato chips are flammable, I think. Moldy potato chips even more so, probably. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Because uh, they explode. They'd be very dry at this point. Well, actually, they don't get dry when they get stale. They get very, very oily. Ugh. I can tell you from experience. These episodes are gross. It'll go with the ranch. So I'm just going to grab about 19 bags of chips 19 bags of chips also i would like three pens because i feel really I, I failed martin earlier and in case anyone needs a pen in case any of my friends need a pen i want to be able to have that for them so i got three pens for my three friends okay you get three gumbo land branded pens next time you lose a finger you should ask to have a pen in, uh, added instead of a lighter that would be such a good idea i wouldn't replace a lighter. yeah that's what i said next time like pen ink is flammable so i'll have a flamethrower on my hand oh man that gives me an idea so I put my hand on the table, and I take out the machete. Oh, no. And I ask, can anyone take off one of my fingers, please? I'm not doing... I'm not... I'm not gonna be responsible for this. Annabelle, please. I morally object to this on many, many fronts, so... Gumbo? Yes? Can you help a guy out? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I think this is a bad idea. It's not like you had any problems doing that before. Yeah, but I thought you were vampires back then. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, heavens. Oh, God. Uh, 
The finger right next to the lighter finger is no longer there. You just chopped it off. Y did you hear that bang I just did? For fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm going to have to edit that in, aren't I? Koala, you swiftly chop your finger off. Are you going to try pushing a pen onto it now, or are you going to... I'll wait? leave that to the professionals, but I would like to... Uh, I'm sure there's some Gumbo Land branded shirts, so I'm just going to bind that back up. Good plan. Okay, you do that. Uh, this means you probably definitely do need to rescue Smedley, because he's probably the only one who's crazy enough to give you a pen for a finger. Yeah, so... Uh, uh, speaking of, is there anything else in this town that needs doing? Remind me never to suggest anything related to amputation again. <laughs> in the town, you've got several objectives left, so you've got try and stop the vampire queen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Propose to that lady. Didn't I already propose? You didn't have a ring. Ah, shoot. Well, I did just chop off my ring finger, so... <laughs> Alright, okay, that'll do. Uh, and you have to stop Smedley from being burnt at the stake. Or, or killed by a spriggan. Yes. Okay, okay. Uh, so when does, when does uh, the burning of Smedley happen? I have actually turned over today's card, uh, and it looks like the judge has arrived. You see down the road from here, like through the gated fences, a cavalcade of quite impressive looking limousines coming down the road from the Lafayette Manor or the ruins thereof. Ah, oh, shit. How do you all want to approach this? I run uh, for the force field and yell at Gumbo to open it. <laughs> we have to go and save Smedley, guys. Yeah, let's go save Smedley. Let's go save Smedley on the way to the courthouse where the pretty lady with the health insurance is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the three of you run through Gumbo Land. Gumbo opens his hands in the same way that the Death God did, and the bubble disappears for a short period of time and then closes back up behind you. You run down past Gumbo Land, across the car park, up the road, and to the town hall where the limousines are now parked outside. I assume you're going to go in? Yeah, I, I mean, bust open the doors, I guess. I don't really know what our plan is, but... Are these cars the Lafayette cars? Uh, so, you can't tell from where you are right now. They just seem like quite expensive cars. Um, it looks like the judge has been in one of them. So, everybody but everybody has vacated these cars. We're coming into an empty parking lot. Yes. So, as we are running up to the doors, I want to stick my lighter finger inside one of the uh, gas caps... Close it very quickly and then run inside. Oh god, why? Because I really hate the Lafayettes. Look at what they did to your family. Look what you did to my family's house. <laughs> I've still got your picture. Earlier you offered to burn it and throw it down a mine shaft. To save your life, which is technically saving your family. You're not wrong and I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> the three of you burst in through the doors and you hear a small explosion behind you. At the desk is one Doreen Krusty, and she gets up and says, What was that? Unrelated. It was the flames of my love, and I get down on one knee, <laughs> and I hold up my wrist missing finger. Is, is that a finger? That is my finger. Will you marry me? Uh, uh, Roll for persuasion. Would any other man cut off his finger for you, specifically? <laughs> Roll for persuasion. <laughs> I'm going to say you get a plus one for the finger. What is this show? I got an 18 with a plus one with a 19. She's going to marry me. Okay. She reluctantly picks up the ring finger and goes, I I'm I'm not sure how I wear this, but I I do. I, I, I will I will marry you. Can you rigor mortis it like around her finger and like get it to wrap a little bit? Oh, yeah. It's stiffening. Mm. Okay. I, I bend it around the finger. I never want to hear Koala say the word. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's stiffening again. <laughs> <laughs> You place the stiffening finger around her finger. She is now engaged to you, I suppose. We will get married at a later date. Can you drop a marriage contract prenup thing for me, Martin? Uh, can I? Yeah, you got papermancy, right? I think so. You hear in your ear, Martin. Yeah, I suppose I can do what. Does, do they want to be married right now? I mean, I could just do that right now. Do, do you want to get married, like, now? I can do that, apparently. Does it need to be witnessed by somebody? <sighs> Wait, why am I why am I going along with this? What am I thinking? It's a contract, dude. Oh yeah. Do it. Uh you know how good it feels. Do it. <sighs> yeah, okay, I mean, yeah, yeah, what do you want, Koala? What I'm thinking, right, is a contract where um upon the death of any one of us, 
whatever the other person owns goes to the one who survives. Um, just regardless of any other facts, just because, like, if I die, I want everything to go to you, Doreen. That is the most romantic thing anyone's ever said to me. I- I've got a lighter finger. I want you to have all of my fingers on my death, if you want them. Maybe. Okay. That said, yeah, just drop a contract where upon death, everything, including any, like, ancillary things like life insurance or health insurance, go to the person who's left behind. Okay, cool. And you want to be married now or later? What do you think, sweetie? I think right now. Okay. Well, actually, this would be a really good argument for why my friends should live. So let's go inside the courtroom and declare that we're getting married there in front of a judge. So it'll be really official. Also sign it, please. I've got a pen. I spawn the contract, I guess. I feel really bad about helping an Australian psycho scam a uh, middle-aged receptionist, but... Here we are. Yeah. But it feels so good. Making that contract feels great, and you are now holding it in front of them. And as soon as she signs, you get this rush of euphoric energy. <laughs> Never do that again. <laughs> and then Koala, I assume you sign as well? I, I do sign. I do sign. With your official gumbo land pen, I assume. Yes. The contract then poofs into Hellfire, uh, and the two of you are technically officially married. She didn't seem to mind me summoning a contract or uh, the contract poofing away at all. She's a good woman. <laughs> Let's go inside and declare that we are that we're that we're getting married, darling, and that also my friend shouldn't be killed. The three of you then go into the courtroom. You open the door, uh, and you're standing there. And Doreen is just behind you. Are you going to say something? This man is the best man at my wedding, and I need him alive to see my children. And and also wear his uh, triumvirate? At the front of the room, there is Smedley in the dock looking particularly sad and sheepish. And there is a very old, haggard-looking man at the judge's podium. Next to him is another man, uh, and he goes... All rise for the Right Honourable Judge Joel Lafayette. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. (laughs) Does he look mildly singed? (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, I've been waiting for this for so long, guys. Oh, no. Oh, gosh. Uh, About the fire in the parking lot. Say nothing. Say nothing. Say fuck all. (laughs) The judge looks at all of you and goes, You may have a seat. The Omen podcast is powered by Ellipsis RPG, the accessible donationware rule set. Now available on itch.io. If you like what you're hearing, please rate us on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. You can tweet to us at the hashtag OmenCast, that's O-M-E-N cast, and who knows, you might get a special mention in one of the episodes from us. Thank you for listening, and remember, stay vigilant. You never know what's out there.